Welcome back to another episode of United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. And I almost forgot we shortened our intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I nearly so, forgot too. So it's uh, so, <laughs> uh, frantically running for the water. I'm Lionel, by the way, in Toronto, Canada. Sorry, I did that. Now, I do, now I'm doing it myself. Toronto, Canada. And and I'm Robert, just outside Nashville. So, um, yeah, a few. Welcome uh, aboard. <laughs> a few cool tech things to talk about today and um yeah some cool stuff so <laughs> there's our there's our opening gaff for the oh day. yeah then there's me bumping into my my mic with my brand new stand i can't really show it to you because it doesn't move whoa that's actually a little bit stickier than i thought um i got one of the low profile arms because i had the one of the cheapos wasn't going to stay upright you didn't bend all over the place made noise all kinds of stuff and I was jealous of other, you know, YouTubers and, and Robert with their low profile ones that go like under monitors and you could swing them around and you could like put it in one spot and sit anywhere around your desk or table and do any kind of video content you want. So I got one and uh, Robert tried to tell me to get a different one. And I said, no, you're wrong. I got this one. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> right. I got to thank him actually, because he, I asked him, I gave him a choice of two. I said, you got experience with them? Which one? He said, take this one, not that one. And he suggested the one that costs less money. And it turned out to be an excellent choice. It's very rock solid. Works fantastic. Uh, I'll probably leave the name of it. Maybe maybe you can put it in, 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 in a link. Uh, and, uh, and try yeah, just send, it, yeah, just send me the... Uh, yeah, send me the, yeah. Uh, the actual link in Amazon and I can convert it to you know my uh, affiliate link. So if you buy it, thank you so much. You just supported the channel. Yeah, and that's it, and that's, that's that's a good idea. I think you should do it because if you're definitely looking to get into it, this thing going to cost me thirty five Canadian, so I'm imagining it's probably about twenty five American, and I don't think that was a sale to be honest with you. I think that was the regular price, but the thing is absolutely fantastic. And there are YouTube videos of a, a few, anyways, of people actually reviewing this, and they all have rave reviews, so it's, it's pretty good. Anyways, so uh, yeah. Apple iOS 18, um, as soon as it was hitting, and I was telling people this the day before, I was texting and calling everyone I knew with an iPhone, please update it so we can text properly. My dad did. Everyone else waited. My dad has been very happy with a lot of aspects of it. I hasn't seen a lot of it. But the first thing he did was he called me and says, what the hell's with this bloody photos app? And since then, I've also seen several videos where they have complained, complained. It's basically being called a flat failure. So have you, have you heard anything about that? Uh, no, but I'm just wondering. So now are you ostracized as a son and have no friends because you forced them to download? Yeah, <laughs> well, not quite. Uh, it gets better that than that, though, because uh, you know, we can talk about the security aspect of RCS. Uh, and the lack thereof in between the two, uh, iOS and, and Android. And that's entirely the fault of Apple. I'm, I, I, I'm I thought flat there was out. A, a, a base, like, security by default. Wasn't that the, isn't that the no. point of RCS? You no, know, there's no E2EE -E going on there at all. Um, uh, no, and if, for, for those who are, might be wondering if, they, if they're unfamiliar, E2EE -E is just in uh, uh, to end encryption three e's <laughs> um huh. why did they and exclude so it? yeah there's none uh well they didn't exclude it it's not included in the in the uh in the global standard rcs uh, which is basically an open source uh standard um however <laughs> there's all kinds of clickbaity articles talking about uh getting in there and saying oh well it's uh, you know it, it, it's not going to get fixed anytime soon or or, or don't count on this and you should be scared and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's scaring the hell out of people. The fact of the matter is not only have they already, the, I think they call him the president of the organization. Uh, I can't remember his name. Has already stated that they're already working on it for the next version of it. And they're trying to push it out early or sooner than later because now they have a world of iPhones that they have to be considered, you know, uh, as as we call clients to to be using this this uh, important software that needs end-to-end -end encryption. Um, and uh, 
Google has already stated that they are working on it and with them. Google is trying to push it out sooner than later, of course. They're saying it shouldn't be that long. So to be very realistic, it looks very much like you're going to have uh, probably something as early as the end of the year or the middle of next year. You know, but it's not going to get pushed out to, to, to anybody right away because this is something that's going to take testing. Why on God's green earth did the entire system doesn't just go, Google's already got it and they got it right. Why don't we just use it? Yeah, see, that's why I, I just assumed that it had end-to-end -end encryption. I thought that was like built into RCS because as long as I can remember Google using it, it's had end-to-end -end encryption. That was the whole point of them moving to it. But I well, guess yes, the end-to-end -end encryption was because of them deciding to implement it right off the get-go, which was a smart move. Yeah, yeah. They basically started that up right away. So that's uh, like yeah. that. That was the point. And that was one of the reasons why they insisted on doing their own as they tried to push it through. And some of the carriers go, no, we're going to use our own. And some of them said, we're going to have, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the type of encryption where it's just your device to the back end, back end to the, to the device. So it's not end to end encrypted. There's always a, a, a hole in the middle somewhere. Um, and, and Google said, no. We're not waiting on you for that. And plus, you know, uh, people on T-Mobile won't be able to talk to people on Verizon and Verizon people won't be able to talk to Rogers in Canada and Rogers won't be able to talk to Bell. That makes no sense. Right. So I said, we're just going to do our own. And some of them tried to block it. And it's like, you can't block it because you're know saying send the messages. It's going to go through our phone and we're going to move it on, you know, through our right. servers because it's their right to have that messaging. And they couldn't stop that. And I think, I think, I don't remember one of the carriers, I think, complained about it. But it was shot down. It never, it never got into court or anything like that. In Canada, Rogers was trying to do the same thing too, and they kept saying, "Oh, we're not going to allow it. We're not going to allow it." And then Google said, "That." I and mean, you remember this is however many years ago now. Google just said, "We're turning it on for everybody." Yeah. And, and the next day, about seventeen million people had access to RCS at the drop yeah. of a hat. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, we'll turn it it's, on. And, like, and then Rogers like, you know what? Let's just accept this. So he's Rogers doesn't actually. I don't. I mean, I think they still have it on the back end. Well, it, well, they have to because obviously they still have to use it with the iPhone and whatnot. But they've gone to the to their to the world standard now, the open standard. Um, since yeah. instead of the proprietary one, we, Rogers has a tendency to get into bed with uh, either AT&T, T-Mobile, or, or, God, I was going to say U.S. Cellular. That's not quite right. <laughs> uh, that would well, that be T-Mobile now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Um, all right. Yeah, no. <laughs> that, that, so basically, it, the whole thing is not as big, hot a mess as, as people think. Here's one of the major things about it. If you have a bunch of doctors that have to text stuff to each other, to iMessaging and whatnot, almost all of them are going to be using iPhones and iPads that are basically cleared through their own IT department within the hospital or within the hospital board or the health board of that, you know, that region, that state or that group of hospitals. Now, that's true anywhere in North America, Canada in the United States, any state, anywhere. Um, they're not just, you know, texting you through WhatsApp and saying, hey, man, you want to talk about Mrs. Jones' liver? <laughs> You'd be surprised, bro. <laughs> well, okay, all right, all right. They're not supposed to be. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. supposed to be. So the bottom line is, right, and of course, government has different. They have to do complete encryption. in order, So they're not just going to start yeah. texting each other from an Android to an iPhone. So basically the bottom line is most businesses that need to deal in – sensitive information i'm not talking top secret stuff but sensitive information are almost always all going to be doing it through iphone to iphone or android to android like the company usually has a bunch of it used to be all blackberries or something right but now it's usually oh we'll, we'll just get a fleet of, uh, of of samsung devices and we'll add this extra security to it and they go through the it department you know what i'm talking about what am i telling you Hell. Yeah, well, but see, that's the thing that with with uh, with HIPAA. I don't know what it's called in Canada, but you know, HIPAA is the U.S. you know Health Information Protection Act or whatever. I, I think it's the same, but I don't know if it's called the same. But it would be it would be the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically, like 
even though our I our RCS is in, in encryption, that technically is not HIPAA compliant because HIPAA HIPAA does not or Google does not say yes, this is HIPAA compliant. Oh no no no! I, I, I yeah I get that. that. But people use that stuff all the time. Man. Yeah no no I I. A hundred percent. I get it. I get it. A hundred percent. But I, 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 what I'm actually, what I was just basically stating was that most of the time it, they're still going to be using the one platform when they're exchanging that sensitive stuff. If it's just you talking to Aunt Jane down the street about that she ate too many pizzas and got drunk. Well, I'm sorry. The government doesn't really care. <laughs> so what? I suppose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to say about pizza and beer and Aunt Jane getting drunk. I mean, <laughs> you know, I understand what you're saying, but it's, you know, people are going to use whatever yeah. is convenient at their fingertips is the problem. And yeah. when you don't, when you don't have that encryption, whether it's HIPAA compliant or not, you just leave people exposed. And fortunately, as we discussed in a previous podcast, sometimes we need protection from ourselves because people yes. don't think about what they're sending. No, I yeah, no, a hundred percent. I'm not saying that people shouldn't have it. I'm just saying nobody should be afraid to use it right now. So I'm not going to turn no. it on and I'm, and then I'm going to refuse to answer all of my relatives who don't use an iPhone's messages. So they're never going to get to come to little Billy's birthday party. So too bad, well, Uncle John, because you decided to buy an, uh, you know, Huawei. Well, maybe not a Huawei. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever, an Android. <laughs> but well, but actually, because that most does happen. Of the most of the big, you know, patient management software companies are now implementing their own internal messaging, data transfer, yes. file sharing within their yes. own like ecosystem slash infrastructure so mm -hmm. like my wife uses eclinical works and she does everything inside of eclinical works which goes through eclinical works servers so they're responsible right. for that encryption they manage all the hipaa compliance they're yes. all government controlled and mandated and you just simply log into a secure website that's ssl and secured with multiple passwords and blah right. blah, blah and you know as you like to say and bob's your yeah. uncle yeah, and obviously, and obviously, she's not allowed to come home and tell you about sensitive stuff that you're not allowed to hear. No, of course you know, she might. She might tell you I had a bad day today, but she's not going to say, "Oh, patient B did this, and and right. and their health has done that." And, and you're like, well, "Okay, honey, you just broke the law." No, obviously, she's not doing that, so that's not an issue. Um, but that's kind of sort of what I'm talking about. But there also are some businesses that will only deal if everyone is using the same type of device with the yeah. exact same program and it is going through specific security measures. And while, as you mentioned, end-to-end -end encryption is not the be-all and end-all of security, <laughs> because we know it can still be broken very easily, actually, uh, if it's not super sensitive, but just sensitive information, then it's just a question of you don't want it intercepted, you know, in the middle and, and and this is not a situation where you're talking about worried about warrants being you know handed out, but regular sensitive information. So um, th that kind of thing, I don't think anybody's really needs to worry too terribly much because you can. Oh, I'm getting the echo again. You can just basically use your head, right? If you have to talk to somebody about something more sensitive, and they're on an Android and you're on an iPhone, you just like, uh, you know what? I can either phone them. Right. Or, or or I can or send I can some send form of encrypted form of email, email or I can, or, you know, I can text them and say, I need to talk to you. Uh, meet me at the usual spot <laughs> <laughs> or use WhatsApp or something. Right. Something yeah. with end -end encryption. Um, yeah. And, and it's as simple as that. It, but in, in all honesty, like my dad, he actually was a little briefly worried. I explained the situation to him and his words to me in the next text after that was, so I guess I'll just keep texting you then. <laughs> yeah we don't talk about sensitive stuff <laughs> we say hi you know how's your how, how are you doing lately and and uh, make jokes and and you know that's it what what people need to realize too is that you know you sure you're gonna have that one kid that hacks anybody because he can because it's fun but the people that do this to make money there's got to be a value proposition there and 
you know, they can look at my bank accounts and tell they're not going to get a lot of money from me. So the amount of time and effort and money it's going to take them to breach my accounts is not going to reward them with any kind of actual payday. <laughs> right. Oh, so yeah, it's, 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 a it, there's, there's no like high value reason. Like, Oh my gosh, this dude has $10 million in the bank. Let's, let's breach his bank account. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, it's and they can so go ahead yeah, and try to breach to my careful. account and they can take all fifty three dollars <laughs> if they want. Right now. People just have to be smart, you know, secure with there two factor, go. two factor authentication, <laughs> two factor authentication. And I'll say it again, two factor authentication. It's very, very important. Um, do you do your due diligence and, and you're going to be and, fine. And you know what? Uh, if you're wondering about pass keys, pass keys, pass keys are not a bad thing. No, pass keys are fine, but I think more yeah. people at least understand two-factor yeah. authentication. Well, absolutely. But here's the thing that, that people something. need to understand. Say, well, should I do two-factor or pass keys? Uh, you can do both. Mm -hmm. You don't have to settle for just one. You can have three-factor authentication and pass keys. I mean, it's not impossible. It can be done. Is that, is that called thrice factor? Ooh. Thrice, I like that word. I haven't heard that in a while. Last time I heard it, I think it was on an episode of The Simpsons years ago. And Homer, <laughs> thrice. <laughs> oh, that's a dad joke there, I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, is it a grandpa so, yeah. joke? Maybe that's okay. <laughs> it could be that too. Yes. Yes. So, anyways, good good job, good. Apple, for you know dropping the ball on that one. Yeah, opinion. well, you know what though? Um, at the same time, at least as a him, start. Yeah, I want to give them credit for at least finally, you know, choking and <laughs> giving up, and uh, we we win. RCS like across the, the board is is here and it's coming. It's going to get better. It's like they took that one bite of broccoli their mother told them they had to eat before they got down to the table. <laughs> I have a question for you in regards to Apple thing because obviously they you know talk about their devices and one of them is their new AirPod thingies. And I swear to God, I didn't know this wasn't a thing. And I'm laughing as I, as I let me just reach into here. As I, as I, the, and now this is the Pixel Buds Pro, not Pro 2. The Pro 2s are apparently even better. Um, and they fixed the few things I didn't like about these ones. About it, and I love them. I do. Um, and they do have very good noise cancellation, but nowhere near the best. Um, Apple has. <laughs> just bragged that they've got noise canceling technology in their new airpods wait <laughs> i thought they had it already <laughs> what the uh, yeah, i i just assumed yeah so you're saying they yeah. have not had noise canceling i should have been way now? ahead of google on that one google was apparently only catching up to samsung and 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 jabra and stuff like that when they wow. did this a year and a half ago um but um or two years ago whatever it is um but the bottom line is is uh apple's just doing it now and you know what i think that's a great segue because i know you have a pair that you probably think are way better than Air airpods well um i haven't had a chance to use them a lot yet but uh yes yeah, so these are the brand new samsung um three oh, they look nice yeah, wow I didn't think they looked nice. that nice but in the pictures I saw yeah. on the internet, but that looks way nicer. I yeah. like that. I, I don't nice like the, the, the stick down design thing, you know, that's basically a copy of Apple's, but I get why they do it because it allows you to put uh, all, you know, all, any antenna stuff in there so you can have more room for the battery uh, and, and a better speaker system. Well, these are the first Galaxy Buds I've had. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, well, let me take it back. I did have some Galaxy Bud Lives. Yeah. And they're like these um, kidney-shaped things that put, you put in your ear. They were the worst earbuds I've ever oh, had. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I they they sat good. in the drawer. And so what led me to get these is I told you that um, I had some J-Labs that one of the earbuds stopped working. Um, right. And I wasn't going to worry about it. I was just going to use my over-ears uh, on my trip. Yeah, but then I get an email from Samsung. Hey, um, you know, our sales ending. Plus, my wife gets that nurse discount that I told you about, and they were yeah. giving me seventy five dollars for these piece of crap lives. <laughs> I was like, okay, so basically, I got like sixty percent off list price for these. So I'm like, okay, yeah. 
And I can tell you that uh, the noise cancellation on these is phenomenal. But one thing I like is that I can actually wear these at work if I wanted to. Keep them in both ears all day and still be able to talk to coworkers yeah. without having to like strain to hear them. Because the ambient noise, you can turn on ambient noise. Um, yeah, I do. A there's, a, there's a certain feature... Uh, the new i the new AirPods do that too, and so 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 do the uh, Pixel Buds Pro. But you see, um, in previous air earphones I've had that have that ambient noise capability, where you can still hear outside noise, it would make the sound of the music or whatever in the earbuds sound like crap. Oh, okay. So I see they they've improved that, so you can still hear the lot. music, but you can music get the ambient noise. Great, but you can. So still they're more like hear... open ear headphones now. Yeah, but they right, sound yeah. like you know, in your ear stuff. And it's, yeah, I'm so okay, far. Away. I, yeah. I haven't had a chance to really use them. Obviously um, I'll be using a lot on the airplane, yeah. but um, so far super happy with them. And man, as soon as I literally, I just barely got the case open. My phone said, Oh, I see some galaxy buds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, I, I love I it like, when that yes. kind of thing happens, right? <laughs> when it's quick. First time I ever got these, uh, that happened. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And I was like, I started texting and going, hey, guess what this happened? And it took so long that it went away. And then when I tried to do it again, it wouldn't work properly. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up having to do it manually. But yeah, no, that that's I, I love that quick pair uh, feature, which of yeah. course Apple's been doing for longer than Android has. Um, yeah. But yeah. that said, they haven't been doing it longer than Samsung. A lot of people have to realize Samsung actually, uh, I think they were the second company to actually make a fast pair feature. I think Huawei did it first, to be honest with you, years ago. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. Correct me in the comments. I don't mind. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And you know what the hey. Um, after, correct him after you like and subscribe. Do that first and then correct him. That way you can see his answer. You know. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but be kind. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, maybe when I get back from my trip, um, or maybe yeah. when we do our podcast from Germany, yeah, that, that's, that's a good idea. I like I'll have had a chance to wear them right. on the aircraft because you know, airplane noise is the worst. So you need some good um, cancellation. These fit good in my ear. They don't fall out unless I'm, you know, tipping sideways or something, which I don't. Last time do I was an airplane, time. there was no such thing as noise canceling head not wireless <laughs> ones anyways yeah that's how yeah. long ago it was two time 2009 nobody had i think there were some wired ones but those would have been like four thousand dollar you know studio quality headphones or something like that right needed to be plugged into a 12 volt source to work or something yeah. but <laughs> yeah, i am exaggerating obviously significantly um but well, as it, you can probably well cool. imagine, these automatically added to my Samsung Find My Network too. Right. So yeah. I can well, also yeah. use that as well. So again. Yeah, which is awesome, of course. And yeah, and, and you another thing you should mention, because they are Galaxy Buds, or what are they called? Pro or something? I don't know what they yeah. call so, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're the top of the line in earbuds for Galaxy devices. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So that pretty much means that uh, you obviously have uh, access to whatever assistant you have deemed as your primary assistant on your device, I would assume. Yes. And I almost forgot about this. One of the, one of the things, too, that kind of like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy them. I really didn't need to, but with all that, plus it'll do the automatic... Um, not transcription, um, like voice dictation. So, right, translation. Thank you. So when I'm in, you know, Berlin, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm in Amsterdam, when I'm in Nuremberg, wherever I'm at, whoever's speaking their derelict, or derelict dialect, <laughs> whatever derelict stalking it's time. Whatever derelict German vehicle is sitting on the road in the middle of the auto. In the, in the middle, middle von der Autobahn. Uh, yeah. It's supposed to do that auto, you know, 
translation where I can hear what they're saying in English in my ear, but they're speaking it in German or whatever. And then I'll be able to, yeah. you know, respond on the app and they can see in German on the app, I guess. I don't know. I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little disappointed that Google hasn't done that with these yet. I uh, thought they, they, I thought they were. Dude, no, but it's not automatic. You still have to do the thing where you have the phone with you and they talk into the phone and you can hear it in the ear. It it, it's, oh. it was brilliant and groundbreaking when they did it two years ago, but uh, you had to know that the live translation was something that had to happen. Basically, what we have here, as you use that to do that, is the first step to true universal translation and Star Trek, baby. <laughs> so when I come to you, uh, when you're traveling sometime and you're like, "Oh my God, what the hell are you doing here?" and I'd say. Bah, 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 bah. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I understand that. Uh, <laughs> and no, that wasn't legitimate Klingon. I don't. I've tried to learn through Duolingo. I gave up very quickly. <laughs> you, you need the Duo, Duo Klingo app is the problem. <laughs> See, that's a grandpa joke again. Uh, we can, we can, I think we should move on a little bit again here. <laughs> I okay. Anyways, uh, I would like to see in closing Google to make you know do an update. I don't think they need to make a new pair. You know the the Pixel Buds three should do it. Technically, these would be capable of it. Uh, an update into Google's translation services um, to do it live because you can technically do it as a conversation anyways. So put it so that it works naturally on the buds. Yeah, I thought for some reason those new buds they came out with that they did in their Google thing here recently, they it actually doesn't lie. I mean, uh, you know what? If they made if they if I didn't hear any announcement about that, I've I've heard only that you still had to actually uh either, you know, like one person talk at a time and maybe push a button, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but what you're talking about is a it's a much more robust system. For starters, if it's a common language uh with your system. Uh, it can it can hear it naturally and 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 just you know like um, what's the word auto auto detect the language. So when you're in Germany, it's going to hear German. If you go to France, it'll hear France. Now, I mean, if you go to Belgium and it's confused about the difference in the French style, it might not know if if it's a dialect that's different, right? Yeah. Or if you go to if you go to Germany and the only people talking to you are speaking Hochdeutsch, you may not understand that either, or it might it might not, but. Right. Well, the well, the one thing nice thing about dialect, though, is what I found, like, for example, when I was in Italy, um, I could still speak some Spanish words and they'd understand it because it had... In Italy? It, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I see still, what you're saying. I, sorry, you know, I, thought you, Latin American I thought you made, type I thought you made a dad typo, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I, yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, because there, because some words, some words in romantic languages are similar. Yeah. uh and close enough so um, maybe yeah. it won't be i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna test it i don't i haven't really looked into well it i yet. can honestly tell you that there are right. a few words um of french that were adopted into german language uh for instance do you know the french word for library i do not i do not bibliothèque. know the french words except of war i just told you it's bibliothèque okay. and you know what it is in german bibliothèque <laughs> It is bibliotech. <laughs> now, uh, do you know the? Do you know? Do you know how to say drugstore in German? In German, in case you got a headache and you need to apotheca. Yeah, yeah. Let me get my let me get my translator app. <laughs> that's that's <okay. laughs> yeah, so I was telling you. <laughs> I I really had intentions you know, on trying to learn. You know how to, to say get out of my but... way and eat my dust. Uh, you know, when you're on a track in Germany, yeah, it's a it's a center button in the center in the center of the wheel. And you just push it really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or if you if you if you got lucky and you were driving like an Elantra in on that track instead, you could push the in mode button and then really enjoy the track. Make yeah. fun of Elantras all you want, but I'm telling you, man. Okay. Anywho, <laughs> all right. Uh, where are we moving on to? Well, um, just kind of stick on the whole um, find my fiasco because that's oh, yeah. what we're calling it now. Um, yeah, we got yeah. I'm really disappointed in this. 
after you sent me that <laughs> message and I was like, what? Right. I, not that I didn't believe you, but I wanted to kind of read some more about it. And sure uh-huh. enough, um, it's not ultra wide band is not even available until the end of the year. Yeah. So you know what this is to me? I don't get that. I, garbage. Uh, well, not garbage, but, no, but, but it's, it, useless. It, it's about as useful as the pebble bee is right now. It's useless um, right now. I don't understand. Um, I actually did think until I read that yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think. Um, day that, before, I think. A uh, day before. Okay. Uh, that that the ultrawide ban wasn't even active activated on it. I think. Really? Well, that explains why. Because I've I've turned my phone on. I thought, why is it not able to pinpoint my phone? It just knows yeah. I'm home. Like I'm going phone to phone, and both my eight Pro and my nine Pro XL have uh, ultra wideband. Why wouldn't they be able to find each other within a couple of feet? Or at least the same room. It made yeah. no sense to me. And I thought, well, you know what? Maybe they just did, maybe it's not ready for prime time. And how wow was I right? Uh that's because yeah. it was, you know, uh Pixel 8 Pro and the Pixel 9 Pro XL have ultra wide band, uh, both available to them. One of them uh, nearly a year old phone already. And they have never had any reason to freaking use it yet. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. I was really again, it wasn't the fact that I, I bought it, spent the uh, money, because I'm gonna test it. I mean, it wasn't yeah. super expensive, but it's like the whole point was like I was like really tried hard to get it before this trip. And nowhere that I read anywhere, oh, ultra wide band's not available to the end of the year, because I wouldn't have bought it. So I got it yeah. just in time, you know, in the last week. I'm like, oh sweet, I got it just in time. And I'm not even going to unbox it. I'm not even going to unbox it until uh, it's actually available where I can actually test it. Yeah. And maybe it'll be available by the time we go on our family November trip. If not, then uh, wait yeah, don't until, count on it. Don't count on it. You're probably yeah. looking at early next year. Probably, um, which is really, really sad because that's going to well, But I have, a, I, have a, I have a question for you, though. Does it S23 Ultra have uh, ultra wideband? Yes. Wow. Okay. So they were a year ahead of. No, actually, it's about the same time as Google. Yes, no, no, they time. were they were several months ahead of Google with that. Okay, because I know the Pixel Seven didn't have it. At least I think it didn't. I I, I looked that up again, but uh, I know the Eight Pro know. has I, it. I think. I think everything going back to S twenty one has ultra wide band because the new. Oh, well, then they're way ahead of Google 2, on that one. Then yeah, the Smart Tag Two is compatible with things from twenty one and up. Yeah, but that's a smart tag, not necessarily the phone. <laughs> but the smart tag uses ultra wideband with the phone to ping. Oh, with the phone. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so. I bet yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. I bet yes. You it that, that makes sense. So if that's the case, then uh, I definitely want to know. Uh, you know, like uh, how how well you can find your own phone with another device if you get if you get uh, the option to do that of course you have to wait till you get an s25 to see how fast you can find your s23 and vice versa right unless you trade it in are you planning on trading it in don't don't say you are i i want to see you have two phones for a change you know one is your little backup and then you can do testing with my um (laughs) my intent Right now is to keep the S23 unless there's some phenomenal trading deal and I can get like an S25 for free or something. I'm going to. Oh, well, I wouldn't keep, blame you for that one. <laughs> I'll probably keep this one because it, it is a little weathered. Yeah. But according to Google, the standard <laughs> Pixel 7 did not, but the Pixel 7 Pro did. Oh, really? Time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the pros uh, did, and it had the regular did not. It was just future proofing it. Okay. I get it. So technically speaking, then when they do turn that on, all three of the devices that I have active right now, and by by all three I mean one of them's Wi-Fi only. Um, I should be able to. They should be able to find each other easily, uh, within feet uh, or inches, even possibly, uh, once they turn that feature on. I'm assuming. And as of um, last year, the Pixel Watch supported ultra wideband too. So, not the first one. No, I don't know. This the first one is. You mean the two, uh, right? As of May 2023, they're saying the one they came out with that launch at that I/O developers conference would have ultra wideband. So I don't know what version. It doesn't say. Oh, I, I got to do this differently than you. 
Do any of the Pixel watches, one, two, or three, support ultra wideband? Only the Pixel Watch three supports ultra wideband UWB. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe that's what they're talking about. Can you then. fact check that and make sure, please? I want to know if my Pixel Watch two supports it. You are correct to double check. The Pixel Watch 2 does not support ultra wideband UWB. Only the Pixel Watch 3 has this yeah. feature. So it says I'm right okay. to check, but it still tells me I'm wrong. Um, so that's interesting. I, uh, by the way, I, I, I will forever suggest that when you, for at least for now, when you ask something that you're unsure of from, from Gemini or ChatGPT or whatever, if you're using that nice newer versions of them, where they talk naturally to you, ask them to double check or fact check because they sometimes will find out that they were wrong <laughs> and give you the proper information. And then you can ask them to cite where they got it from so you can double check it yourself. Anyways, that's a segue we didn't necessarily need, but yeah. whatever. Um, okay, so my so, watch is garbage. <laughs> well, I don't know about garbage. It uh, doesn't have ultra wideband. <laughs> garbage oh that's right there is no ultra wide band for the network so oh yeah it doesn't garbage. even matter it's it works perfectly really fine now <laughs> so yeah and, and honestly the the i got this one for free i paid for the other one uh yeah. for the first one this one came free uh this year google said guess what we're gonna give you free this year nothing go to hell um no that's not true they they gave us a year of of of, of two terabytes plus gemini advanced so <laughs> and considering how much I pay for it, that actually comes out to more than watch what costs. Right. Yeah. Fucking A. Yeah, that's, yeah, actually bad, that's actually not a bad that's actually not a bad giveaway. It. I'll yeah. take it. I can save that money up and buy a watch one day, right? Um, but I'm not gonna be getting that watch probably not even this calendar year. I probably it'll probably it'll be, it'll be the first time I ever have to have one of these pixel watches. It'll be six months old by the time I get it. But there'll be updates, the ultra wideband will be implemented in the network by then, probably. And then I'll be able to use my way. Now, maybe I'll get the, the LTE version as well. So, I mean, watch will always be on my wrist when I'm out. I can lose yeah. anything and I'll be able to find it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've had an LTE watch and Kenny has one, my son-in-law, and never uses it. Never uses the LTE. He's just paying $10 a month for nothing. I, I, I think it's I, I think it's it's kind of pointless. I mean, yeah, you can technically go off without. It, it, it does depend phone, on who you are and what you need but, it for. You know, I know people who do and it often they find themselves in a position where it's I've had times where I was just close enough to my phone that I it, that a call came in on my watch mm -hmm. but not close enough that I could answer the call and it was important. So I've actually had to answer on my watch. And then say, just give me a second. I need to transfer it to my phone, but it's going to take me a minute. Uh, or I'd grab my pic my my Pixel Buds and pull them out, and I'd be close enough. Yeah, well, they can go further than the watch can, to be honest with you. So yeah, it's easy. Um, yeah. And then connect them, and then transfer it to the Pixel Buds, right? Which is it's cool. And by the way, you should you can do that same thing. Anybody can where they've got you know like a Wi-Fi only watch, and they've got Buds and the phone, and they're yeah. you know all within talking distance to each other, but not necessarily an eye shot. So it, it's kind of a nice convenience. You don't have to just so, so that you people who like apples out there, <laughs> you don't have to be on Apple to have an ecosystem that works. Right. And, and, and just for the Samsung fanboys, you don't have to be on Samsung either. Right. Uh, Google pretty much has a lot of stuff that works together quite well too. Um, Samsung is probably a little closer to having an ecosystem as tight as Android. Google's oh, getting there very quickly. But more importantly, is almost uh, most of the Android things can work together. And the benefit of Samsung at all is that everything Google works with Samsung, but not everything Samsung works with Google. <laughs> well, but, you know, I, I love Google's ecosystem. Just like uh, this is yeah. fairly new. It's a second gen temperature sensor it's the same temperature sensor that actually comes with the new nest oh i i thought it was one of those gen. one of those uh european iced cookies <laughs> it does look like that <laughs> it does, I, those things I are good so what I are the ginger things from sweden or something 
or Dutch. Yeah, so from I, I got it so ways. I can, you know, manage the temperature in, in my office area here because it's always warmer here than the, than the rest of the house. Uh, so I attached it to the upstairs thermostat, uh, which is an S thermostat. It's third gen. It does work with third gen. And it, it's like, it took me like five seconds to pair it, attach it, and boom, done. And I was like, I, I made a, you know, a video. It's on my, it's on my tech channel. And I was like, well, I expected that to take longer. <laughs> this video is really short because <laughs> it just works, man. That when, okay. they, when they divide, design their stuff to work together, it just works, period. You know, And that's why I do love the Google ecosystem. Same thing with Apple and same with Samsung within their own little spheres. They design their stuff to just work with each other like seamless. It's when they go outside that bounds, yes. you start getting into these weird scenarios where this doesn't pair with that. That doesn't pair with this. This doesn't work with that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, but you stick within the own ecosystem. That's why I tell people all the time. They're like, Oh, can I do this and that? I'm like, well, you can, but you know what? If you're on Apple, you need to stick with Apple. If you're in Google, stick with Google, et cetera, et cetera. Oh Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Stephanusa. That's what it's called. Stephanusa. But anyway, I haven't so, had yeah. those in forever, and I I would kill for those things again. That's yeah, pair, uh, it's actually they, not they, a uh, German thing, believe it or not. I think it's I believe it's Dutch. Um, no, they they pair well you with can the get Google them in ecosystem. Germany, though. What's that? They pair well with the Google ecosystem. Uh, they pair well with any ecosystem. They're fantastic. <laughs> uh, speaking of ecosystems, the worst segue ever has nothing to do with an ecosystem. No. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not, not, not even going to get into the dad joke part. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, okay, on, so no, we that's... got through some Apple stuff, your Samsung stuff. Uh, there was something else. That something has slipped my mind that, that, uh, that we're going to bring. Oh, we had a super moon. Uh, wait, wait, what do we call it? Um, yeah, a super, it super moon, moon eclipse. I think it might have been a harvest. No, it's the harvest moon is later, so it can't be a harvest moon. I think that's the next yeah. one is a harvest moon. Um, super moon eclipse. Now, and there's been a lot of debate online. Usually, the fanboys, Samsung versus uh, uh, Pixel, and the Pixel, like, oh no, our pictures are better, and we can zoom. And hundred times zoom is garbage. And it's, but but if you compare the thirty times to the thirty times, or the thirty times to the sixty times, or seventy times, it depends on who's taking the picture, the conditions in which the picture is being taken. Uh, there's there's a ton of factors. Do you clean your lens? Um, Proof is in the pudding. I, I take pretty good pictures. Robert attests to that. Uh, even with my Pixel, never mind the expensive cameras I've owned. But uh, I have to admit, when I see something that my phone is not capable of doing under the same conditions at the exact same time, <laughs> I, I, I have to say Samsung wins. So first thing I want to show you is... Uh, how my mouse doesn't work but you can't really see that right now <laughs> let's try that again uh this is the yeah, other right okay let's put this up i actually shot this picture with uh a, a cheap telescope uh with my pixel 9 pro xl on it on it on the main camera uh i took dozens and dozens of shots and of course i had to keep moving the telescope refocusing so on and so on this is actually right at the peak of of the eclipse so the dark spot on the top is actually the hard shadow followed by a little bit more of the lighter shadow and then the part of the moon is not in shadow that's as deep as i got that's the peak so let me uh take that back out of there and now the next thing uh hopefully robert's ready because unfortunately uh, for some reason i couldn't get it to work on my computer <laughs> and i sent him the picture um the, oh that's yours right yes because uh, that's not mine. <laughs> this is Robert's picture. Robert, you tell him how you took that one. So um, I didn't have a tripod or telescope or anything. I was actually in the middle of a video, but I stopped because I wanted to do this for him because he wanted to compare it. And so this is roughly, I think it was like 80, 90 X, somewhere around there uh, on my S23 Ultra. I think, yeah, I, I think you said it was 79 it or 76 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's over 75 X. Um, yeah. I was just holding it with my hand and um, took the picture. One nice thing, and I 
think the pixel does it. I'm not 100% sure, but like when you zoom in super far, does the pixel give you like a little square box in the middle of the screen? To it does, yes. Okay, yeah. so I just, you know, looked at my screen and lined it up and that little box is that, you know, I had my hand resting on the hand railing and just snapped that picture. It was a little right. cloudy, uh, so it's it's not as, I think, defined as what it probably could have been uh, if I would have had a tripod and, you know, worked a little more on it. But um, that's what it is. That's just raw, straight, boom, run outside, take a picture and run yeah. back inside. Now, now the, <laughs> the amazing thing about it is if anybody's looking at this, for starters, it, it goes without saying, and it's very obvious, this is um, not super detailed, but it's also not unclean. And what I mean by that is it's very obvious what you're looking at. You can still make out that there's craters in there. You can clearly see the actual shadow from the eclipse, the eclipse shadow on the moon, as well as the, uh, I don't remember, Don, and I hate, to, I hate this, and I can't remember which one is the umbra and which is the penumbra, but you clearly see the line between the two and where the moon is not in shadow at all. So all three parts of that, basically it's like we're looking at three phases of the moon all at once. And that's what's beautiful about a partial lunar eclipse. And so this captured it nicely. Now, if you could bring up the one I sent you that's not with a telescope, while I kick my water over onto the floor, this is the best I could do. When I got any closer, this is only at 25 by time zoom, I think. It might have been 20, to be honest with you. Um, when I got any closer, it just became such a ball of fuzz that you really only saw dark splotches versus light splotches and the hard shadow line. So while this is actually, for a cell phone, very good for 20 times zoom. It really is. Yeah. Um, Samsung beat it, in my opinion, because, again, we shot these at almost exactly the same time, maybe a three-minute difference in time. Uh, whereas, whereas mine... Um, for the with the telescope, it's actually let me let me go back into the telescope one one more time. You get that one off there. I thought I could um, make it to where it had both pictures showing, but I guess I can't. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I. Well, I don't know why this is going like this the way, but nonetheless, uh, this one it, it just doesn't have the same level of detail you'd expect from a telescope but this was a cheapo telescope right so if you think about it if this is an expensive telescope that would look pretty nice but anybody's phone would take a good one with a telescope what my point is is that that picture is actually only marginally better than the samsung did handheld at like 70 times zoom so <laughs> it's impressive when you think about it yeah um so uh, well, Pixel's the first one to do that. Well, yeah, Pixel's absolutely. the first one to do that. That's the first one I saw the you know, zoom in real deep into and take a good moon shot. Um, yeah. Was it was that a Pixel Seven? It was the first Pixel Six? Six Pro. Uh, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. But um, well, actually, no, you could do it before that. The, the, the four did it too, but it's just this face it you couldn't get very deep <laughs> with, no the astro with, uh, that astro photography didn't come out in pixel six i thought that was pixel seven are you kidding me no astro photography was around before that people would pick fives are using okay now you're gonna make me you're gonna make me ask again well you know I, i've been outside when of the did pixel, the pixel, for pixel phones years? first introduced the astro photography mode I swear to god if i'm killed never mind but <laughs> first introduced the owl feature in October. Owl fe what are they talking about an owl feature well, well there's no such thing as an owl. i said astrophotography feature that's <laughs> where it turns all your pictures into owls the pixel phone first introduced the astrophotography feature in october 2019 with the release of the pixel 4. oh wow okay <laughs> i no. told you <laughs> and you and you said that was your favorite pixel so it, it was but i didn't i didn't use that a lot so i, I don't remember that it had that oh that's right you were too chicken to go outside <laughs> yeah too chicken was yeah. that wait was that before you moved or did you already move at that point you I were living know. in a different house weren't you i thought you were living in a different house didn't you just no. or am 
I thinking no, of somebody I, else? I've been, I, I've been I, in this house for 15 years. Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong. See, I keep forgetting because I'm getting older and well, I don't remember who other, moved and who didn't. US friend. <laughs> one I probably don't talk to anymore. It's great. <laughs> remember that one. But there'll be another US friend that won't be talking to me now. <laughs> I'm on a roll today, folks. Let's let's get, let's get back into this. Okay, so basically, the bottom line is is um, I'm a huge Pixel fanboy, but I have to call it as I see it. Uh, while I think that there are some aspects of where the Pixel does better in some camera features, and there are a few that Samsung matches and maybe does better a couple here and there, the edit, a couple of editing things that they have that Pixel doesn't do as well does but not as well necessarily um when it comes to zooming in really far and i would never do this on people or in broad daylight on something or in dark night but if you want to get in on the moon samsung wins 100 percent. i kind of wonder what uh have you seen any pictures from from like a iphone 15 pro max or something like 15 oh, Pro Max. Uh, Lots of pictures from 15 Pro Max. No, I mean, like, on the moon, like, how does it compare? I haven't seen any. Oh, garbage. Garbage. That's, that's what I'm saying. They, it's, they, they have a five times lens, but they, they don't they don't fix it when you zoom in. And once they hit 30 times, they're absolute garbage. Total garbage. Yeah. Pixel phones have are capable of, in the right light, getting up to 30 times. Um, and some people have done it with the moon. Uh I'm not crazy about it. The difference is, is that if you did a 30 times zoom with your Samsung, it would look like garbage too. It's when you start getting into 60 times and higher where it stops getting worse until you get about 85, 90. 100 is garbage. I tell people all the time, don't 100 times zoom on a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah. And the only reason why that moonshot looked the way it did again was because it was the moon. Had you been shooting a ship on the ocean, it would have just looked like a blob of light floating in the water. And it would no, look like an oil painting. That's not true. It, yes, it, it doesn't look good. No, I because I've done it. When I last time we were in Florida, I took a picture of a barge out in the ocean. And I remember you showed it to me, and that's I exactly I what I said to you. Anybody. I said it looks like garbage. I didn't show it to anybody. And you, yeah, could, you did. You could make out that it was a ship. It wasn't just a blob of light. But yeah, it's garbage. Oh, it's well. not intended to be a nice, you know, canvas on your wall. <laughs> um, I have taken some thirty times shots as tests in the past in very good light from across the water out on Lake Ontario. Um, some of them are not too terrible if you don't try to pixel peep, but it's really hard to take a picture like that and not pixel peep. And then it just ruins it for you. The thing is that people got to remember is that most people aren't pixel peeping those shots. Right. You, if you share it, they're not seeing anything but what you put out. They they don't zoom in, most people. They just look at it and go, oh, I like it or I don't like it. And that's right. it. So that's right. why I usually tell people, you know, uh, if you want to do some zoomed in shots, make sure you use the highest optical zoom that your device has, three times, five times, whatever it is, 10, 10 times in some Samsung phones. Um, but don't go beyond 20 times zoom, even on the 10 times camera of a Samsung. Uh, they, uh, infamously they infamously have a horrible, have horrible 30 times, times uh, zoom pictures, zoom pictures on their 10 on times their 10 lens, which is crazy. crazy. You'd think they'd be able to do it better, but they don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually try to zoom that far in, anyways. I, it's, you know, I usually yeah. will keep it at 10 because, like, on the Samsung, like when I go to zoom in and out, it gives yeah. me like two, five, 10. Like it gives me these yeah. steps. And so I just like choose something in between there. I typically try not to go much. Yeah, and the ten and the ten ten times zoom on any flagship phone right now actually good. looks good. So on some of them it looks a little better than others, but it's still good because what happens if you got a five times uh, uh, optical zoom lens, for instance? Then the ten times mm -hmm. is actually only two times, as in zoomed in one hundred percent of uh, of of the uh, five times. So you're only cropping by 50%. Um, when you do it to 20 times, you're now cropping uh, by, uh, I can't count, 75%. And it starts to get a little hairy at that point. 
you get to 30 percent now you're cropping almost 90 percent or something like i again my numbers are a little off but but you you get what i'm saying and so suddenly it becomes minuscule so you start getting right. 70 80 90 100 it's tiny it works for the moon because the moon is gigantic and chock full of light that it's reflecting from the sun so right. that's why yeah. that works the ship that you or barge you took the picture of out on the water you could still see what it was um, because again, you were seeing reflected light off both the sun, the boat, and the water. Well, not reflected off the sun, but you know what I mean. Um, right. You're getting a, a ton of light that is reflecting back. Um, but the biggest problem wouldn't have been necessarily that you were doing it at that ridiculous zoom level. It would be at that level out on the water, you're still getting heat refraction. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, it's not that it was a great, great picture. I'm not saying it was a great picture, but it, it yeah. was. It no, was I'm just, still I'm just saying, even if you had a hundred times natural zoom, it still wouldn't have looked perfect because of heat refraction. But if the whole, the whole point anyways, of me yeah. taking that picture was my wife yeah. and I were were debating whether it was a container ship or was a cruise ship. She oh, calls okay. a cruise ship, and I said, "No, that's a that's a barge. That's a container ship." She goes, "No." So I zoomed in, and, and I you were right. See apparently, it was a container ship, and so, then you slept on the couch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. but you know, it, it, if it's stuff like that, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I can see, yeah, it's contained, right? Yeah, you know. yeah, that that's you know what I I've done the same thing when I saw what looked like an oil rig in the middle of Lake Ontario. I'm like, what the? Why does that look like an oil rig in the middle of Lake Ontario? It and, and so I zoomed in as far as it would go, which was thirty times zoom, um, and it turned out to be a barge ironically enough that is uh anchored in and it looks from a distance like an oil rig because of the way it's anchored in it's doing some kind of dredging i don't know for what reason mm. uh and i saw it again this year in a totally different place so i have no idea what's going on but um mm. it is funny Who knows? maybe yeah. they're like you said doing some dredging fixing the fixing the flow <laughs> Uh, so yeah i mean it's uh you know i think uh, the cameras um you know when i go on my trip this uh next week i'm actually going to be just using my gopro and my phone right i'm going to primarily be using my gopro and i'm doing that on purpose because i want to see if i can just use just the gopro for the most part and have good images yeah. now i've done a lot of um Googling on it and watched a lot of different videos and some top photographers like, oh, yeah, do this. And everyone says, use the eight by seven lens. That way you can crop widescreen or you can crop like nine by 16. Right. And you don't have to worry about losing, you know, any of the image in either crop. You can get oh, yeah, a yeah, nice okay. still center yeah. frame and do it at least 4K if you want, you know, 5.7. Um, but you should do it at least 4K widescreen and use it. So I'm going to do the 8 by 7 4K. I don't need 5.7. I don't need that much definition. How, uh, are you taking more than, like, what does it take, regular SD cards or? Yeah, it takes regular SD cards. And I've got a 256, a 128, and I think a couple of 32s or something. So. Uh, like right tiny, now, I got a I got a one twenty eight in there that I mean, if I I can record two hours on a hundred twenty eight gig. Card. As long as these are the faster types of because of, you're recording four K, you want it to be good quality. But you've done this already. You've been oh yeah, using they're it, v, so you, yeah, you know they're good enough. <laughs> yeah, they're V thirties. They're rated V. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're good to go. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Well, are yeah. you taking a? tablet or laptop or something with you at all oh i'll have my laptop i always i always okay well there you go so you can you can dump them um anyways yeah. if, if yeah. you start to run out yeah. and um i'm taking external hard drive so right, hey, so, there you go uh, external hard drive <laughs> so uh, i'll be able to how big is that actually, one that's two terabytes yeah, wait hold, hold that one up again so i can see it <laughs> Oh, dang it, I couldn't get it. Here, here, let me get a little closer for you. See, that? I, I only have a 256, and I, I'm already scared it's going to run out about uh, six or seven uh, video edits. And I'm going to have to start making sure. I'm going to have to start figuring out ways to 
find some online sources to keep some of them and eventually delete anything that's not on YouTube. And that sucks. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want to have to get rid of content uh, in case I want to go back and do a second edit at some point. Right. Um, well, you know, obviously I have a lot of online storage. I have two terabytes, um, but I just don't know that I have the bandwidth to upload large files while I'm traveling. So I plan yeah, on actually yeah, keeping that, them on yeah. the SD on the, the external hard drive only because I yeah. can make sure that's secured. And if, for some reason, my laptop gets crushed or something. <laughs> I'm not going to lose. Yeah. That. Like, yeah. Now, if you have room on both, then having on both. Yeah. 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 It's not sure, a, yeah. Sure. yeah. You got, that way you backup, got, you got some say. backup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. But, uh, nonetheless, when it's exactly, we got to make sure we know when, when you go in here. Cause, uh, uh, um, it's, my flight from Nashville leaves at five. Um, I fly to JFK. I have like a three hour, layover in the, talking tomorrow no friday friday right okay and then uh i've got uh, will it be i guess my flight departs around midnight out of jfk and i land in heathrow at twelve fifteen. my and, son's and, already bought oh. train tickets and we'll head across the pond on the train oh you're going through the channel Apparently so. We were going to take oh, the, the man. ferry you across. Me, you got to tell me all about the channel. I want to see some vlogging. Um, you got to do some vlogging. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. You, I'm going to have the cell signal you, down there. I don't know. You, you don't, that, I said vlogging. I didn't say live. No, vloggers don't do live crap. Well, you edit that crap later. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, my point was if like five I had, seconds of this I and would... ten seconds of that. Well, of course. You think and I'm so not going to be recording? Yeah, but here's the thing: you can do that in 1080p and save yourself a, a whole smack load of of, uh, of uh, room on your drives because it's just a vlog. You don't need to. Do I, I got 4K. plenty of room. I got plenty. Of room. Oh, whatever. Do it in 4K then. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. And the, the bonus I'm gonna do it in 8K. Just it's for a that. vlog, and you don't have to. You don't have to edit that and put it out until after you get back home, anyways. Right? And that's the whole point. You get back and you can talk about how your trip was. Uh, but yeah, the fact that you're going through the tunnel. I want to see a vlog about the entire experience. Oh, we got, we're in London and blah, blah, blah. And we're heading for the channel now. Here we are in the channel, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, so that's not what it'd be like. It'd be like, um, <laughs> and, you know, and then of course, when you hit France, cause that's obviously where you hit, right? Um, actually, out. we're going straight into Brussels. I'm sorry. The channel comes out in France, doesn't? It? Or am, am I wrong? I, am I an idiot? Uh, we, I, we might have to switch a train, but we're actually going straight from Heathrow to Brussels. I don't know if we have to switch trains or not. I don't know. He didn't I, tell me, but I, I'm still at a loss because the channel doesn't come out in 17 different places. It goes in one and out the other, and you can only take a train through the channel. You can't right. take so it I'm, over I'm the water. I'm sure. <laughs> really, <laughs> I'm sure it just changes tracks, or maybe we have to change trains. I don't know. Okay, so basically the bottom line is you will come out of there in France, but you're not stopping in France. You're going right. to Brussels. Straight to Brussels. Originally, we were stopping Straight to in Brussels. France. That's why I said right. that, because we were actually going to rent a car uh, in Calais in, Bru in France, right, which is right there on Calais. the coast. But, you know, we decided to kind of change right. that up a little bit. So we're actually staying in Brussels four nights instead of two Brussels and two in Amsterdam. And we're going to train... How long um, are from you, Brussels out and about? So how long is the entire trip? I don't remember what you said. Um, well, total nine days, but oh, um, okay, okay. We come back. Um, well, my flight leaves at like eight in the morning on Sunday, so I'll be back on the 29th. So you're basically gone for two weekends and the week in between. Yes. Ah, all right. So, uh, when is the uh, the big the big drive <laughs> that's going to be thursday uh so that's why you were 27th. saying you might be able to do the do the podcast on the wednesday right because we're um, technically we're supposed to arrive in nurberg at our hotel that wednesday evening to check in and then thursday and ironically so i got to here's a funny story I know we're running a little over, but that's okay. So I went to go look on the map to find out where the track rental car company is because we have to go pick up that car. And ironically, it's literally right next door to my hotel. <laughs> I don't think that's ironic. I think that's kind of how they work it out. Well, so that you, you will end up renting right next door. 
I didn't mean What's to that? rent right next door. I didn't mean to rent the hotel right next door to the rental car company. It could well, have been anywhere. You probably anywhere. didn't mean to, but I'm pretty sure they probably work it out so that the chances of that happening are pretty high. <laughs> it's, I don't know about that. I mean, there's, a, there's there's several different companies that rent cars, and there's lots of hotels around there, so it could have been any of them. So it just oh, yeah, okay, all right, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Um, uh, yeah. So we'll walk out the door and walk across the parking lot to the <laughs> rental car company good. and pick that's up our good. GTI and head over to the track. So yeah. What's the name of the hotel? No, don't tell me the name of the hotel. I'm saying you're online. <laughs> we're on a, we're on a, I'm going to where, where's your hotel room so everybody can go and find out. Um, that was a stupid question. <laughs> Forget about that. Please don't put that in the short. <laughs> I think it's just called Motor Lodge. But there's lots of motor lodges. But I didn't know there was anything called a motor lodge in Germany at all. To be honest with you, must be expecting a lot of Americans. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I haven't heard that in a long time. I had to drive out on the highway. I think they took all the motor lodges off the highways in most of Canada. <laughs> there used to be lots. Drive down the road, you couldn't go. You know, you, uh, I think maybe at the at most uh, it's seventy miles or hundred kilometers, whatever you want to call it, right? And you'd hit something that would say such and such motor lodge. <laughs> yeah. They were quite popular. I, back in the days, hitting the road was it was an adventure. Now it's just, oh, God damn it, <laughs> still an adventure. It, it used to be fun. It used to be fun though. It was a thing, right? And when you wanted to stop in a motel, you knew it wasn't going to be a great hotel, but at least you didn't expect it to have bed bugs and rats. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's not get into that. All right. Yeah. So next time we do a podcast you will be somewhere in germany however there is a possibility that if there's delays we may have to do it after you've had your drive or if you know where you're going to be and it has to happen a day ahead that's also a possibility i suppose although i don't know your itinerary yeah but uh, we, we just have to play it by ear so we'll we'll see how yeah. it goes the intent is to have the podcast at the hotel um whether it be day, in the room, I'm hoping to the day the day like, prior you know, to, I assume is what you meant, right? Yeah, that Wednesday, yeah. that like right. our normal podcast night, it'd just be done earlier in the day for you, but later in the day for me. So, but right, six or seven hours ahead of your time. So, okay. Well, yeah. like I said, uh, barring anything coming up, I can make arrangements to to try to do earlier. But slightly later for you might not be that bad because it might take you a while to get in, get settled in, and get your stuff together. Yeah, so, I'll keep you posted as yeah. to what our travel looks Hopefully like. Hopefully you have this really summer. phenomenal balcony view or something, right? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I don't think this has, I think they're all f floor, you know, like ground level. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it yeah. almost looks like a It's not it as if you're going like to the tropics, right? There's going to be palm trees in the background or something. <laughs> Yeah, I like the beach. No, there are some hotels on the track that have you know multiple stories, but uh, this might have two right. stories. But if 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 it does, that's about all it has. It looks like an old house or something. Hey, if there's a business across the road and you can see it from the window or or a balcony or anything like that, and it has a nice obvious German sign for their business, I'd love to see that in the background. I would mean, add some ambience, or how do you say it in German? <laughs> German well, my, my my intent is hopefully to do it um, from like inside their like not lobby, but like if they have a dining area, I think they have like a dining area or something. Because um, I wouldn't mind giving a little, you know, props to the hotel, you know, and people. Can oh, yeah. Check okay, it okay. Out. You know, that's that would be totally fine. Um, Depends on if they'll allow it. I mean, it's. Well, obviously, I'm going to ask it. Public areas, public areas, right? They might, you know, they might, they might be like, yeah, sure, it's free advertising for us. Yeah, so it's just. Um, but then again, you don't want to be telling everybody where the hell you're staying, <laughs> unless you're leaving before it's published, in which case, go nuts, right? Um, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um. Yeah, just called Motorsport Hotel. Motorsport Hotel. That doesn't sound very German. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's see. 
Yeah, here you go. Here, let me share this with you. This is this is cool because you, you, you'll like this here. This is real real quaint. Uh, let's see. No, not that one. That one. Wow. I typed that into maps and it only came up with one. Houtschlasse. Is that it right there? Wow. So that's oh what we're saying. Oh, oh, God. And so I don't know why it keeps. Oh, swimming. beautiful views. Even at night, it's going to look nice. I'm telling you. So Those right where this light up and behind there and stuff, right? So yeah, right where this car is right here, this um, like SUV. Mm -hmm. That's the um wish I could zoom in on that. That's okay, I can on my phone. <laughs> I'm looking at the exact same picture from Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. That's the rental car company parking lot. <laughs> oh, okay. So when I say right next door, I mean right next door. <gasps> Motorsport paddock. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's okay. all race themed, you know, because obviously it's right there at the track. Yeah, you can that's see why they call it a paddock. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a beautiful looking property. It had really good ratings. Uh, the reviews are real good for it. Um, so I'm kind of hoping I can maybe do it in some type of you know open area like this right here. That's got something in the background. Mm. That's very tasty food. What kind of food do they have? Well, that looks too American. Come on, they could have some German food, right? I wish I could do a racing taxi. That would be cool because it's a professional driver that takes you around the track at full tilt. So just go full tilt. What, are you scared? No, I, I mean like in an actual race car full tilt. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All right, fair <laughs> Not one that you can rent <laughs> full tilt. Yeah, 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 I, I get I get you, I get you. I, I, you know what? I hate being in a car where someone's, I don't care how fast it's going. You put me in a freaking space shuttle, I don't give a damn that it's going 17 billion miles an hour. I, if I can't fly it, I don't care. You get me from point A to point B. Um, I like to drive. I hate being subjected yeah. to someone else's driving. I don't. Um, I, 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 I like being a, a driver myself, but in that kind of situation, if somebody wants to race me around Nurburgring at full tilt in an actual race car, I'll be happy to be a passenger and be a part of that. Uh, I get that. I still. I still. I wouldn't. I mean, don't get me wrong. If somebody said, "Oh yeah, you can do this," um. I, th I wouldn't say no. I just I really wouldn't care. I wouldn't go out of my way. You know, <laughs> if someone else said, oh, I'm getting in line in front of you, I'd go, go ahead. <laughs> well, on that note, me. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so listen, yeah, you definitely want to tune in next week and yeah. check that out because that's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to do my best uh, to get it published while I'm in Germany. So you can kind of see it like as it happens, so to speak. Um, I don't know if it's good enough connection. Maybe we'll do another live. That might be cool. You know, I don't know what kind of connection I'm going to have, but it, well, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Live. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so we'll but, find uh, out. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a little conversation before we get, uh, before we start doing the recording. And obviously if the, if the picture isn't working out, then it won't work out very well at all. If it works out perfectly yeah. fine and it might be possible to do a live. Uh, Ironically, a lot of the reviews say that the hotel has really good internet. So I don't know what that what their idea of really good internet right, is, right. but I guess you know because that's all very relative. Uh, so yeah, we'll yeah. see. But I don't know. We'll 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 figure it out. Yeah, we'll we'll make it happen. You know, one way or the other. All right. We'll do something. So, but on that note, catch us next week. It's gonna be awesome from Germany. And as of right now, I'm in the U.S. and I'm Robert. And uh, so I'm Lionel, it. and I'm still in Toronto. <laughs> and unfortunately, and we'll I'll still you. be in Toronto next week. <laughs> we'll get you next week. Talk to you later. <laughs>